Provost Sappy, that was a really lovely introduction. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Chair Brennan, President Giuliano, faculty, students, staff, friends of Gettysburg College and of higher education. I'm delighted to be part of this very important occasion. <clears throat> I am myself a graduate of a Pennsylvania liberal arts college one founded a half century later than yours. And I'm also, as you heard, a Civil War historian. So I feel especially honored to help celebrate this college's long traditions of learning, scholarship, and service to the world. I'm also a former Harvard president, a fact that might induce a pang of anxiety among those of you who share my interest in history. A little more than 150 years ago, not far from where we gather today, Gettysburg became well acquainted with another Harvard ex-president, extremely well acquainted. He spoke nonstop to his audience for more than two hours. I'm referring, of course, to the unfortunate Edward Everett, who ever since has been best known not as a Harvard president, or as the senator, governor, and diplomat he also was. Instead, he is remembered as the hapless orator who droned on endlessly and forgettably before Abraham Lincoln came to the podium and in 272 words delivered one of the greatest speeches of all time. To Everett's credit, he recognized this and he congratulated Lincoln. He said, I should be glad if I could flatter myself that I came as near to the central idea of the occasion in two hours as you did in two minutes. Now, please rest assured, although I could happily speak all day about your new president, I've promised him I will not do an Everett. I know full well that the most important words uttered today the central idea of this occasion will be President Giuliano's, not mine. But before I cede the podium, and before you hear his own uh, 272 or so well-chosen words, I do want to say something about your new leader and the values of higher education that he embodies so well. We live in a time of enormous challenges for colleges and universities and I can think of no one better suited to confront them. It was my great privilege to work closely with Bob and to rely on his dedication and exquisite judgment through my 11 years as Harvard's president. He has now been your president for barely more than 11 weeks, but I hope it is already becoming evident to you just how fortunate you are. Bob is here today taking on these new responsibilities because he believes so strongly in the value and the values of liberal arts education. At a time when pressures come from all sides to transform college into an increasingly narrow form of vocational training, colleges like Gettysburg stand for something precious a commitment essential for us both to carry forward and continually reimagine. The commitment to an education that leads not just to good jobs, but to good lives. An education that provides students with the tools and the spirit to separate truth from untruth, fact from fiction an education that nurtures habits of mind, such as critical inquiry and reasoned argument, generous listening, and openness to varied points of view, empathy for others, and a will to pursue causes larger than ourselves. These are just some of the fruits of liberal arts education at its best, and we have never needed them more. Higher education must enable us to understand a world beyond the inevitable limits of our own lives. 
through the pursuit of fields as varied as literature, anthropology, astronomy, and through the experience of interacting with others who differ from us in origins, in identities, in intellectual perspectives. A residential liberal arts college is ideally designed to do just that. In your classrooms, in your dormitories, in the servo as you share not just meals, but food for thought. The many monuments that fill this campus, this town, this battlefield, remind us that this is hallowed ground. Let it also be common ground. This was the place where we as a nation almost came apart. Let it be now a place that models ways of coming together. A place that draws strength from all that makes us different even as it reveals and reinforces our common humanity. Gettysburg has been witness in the past to acts of extraordinary courage. Learning in our own times requires courage as well. The courage to abandon a preconception, to open a mind, to, listening to, to listen to an unsettling point of view, to risk disagreement, to dare to be wrong in order to confront the difficult questions that permit us to come closer to real truth and understanding. I know there are no bystanders here. Your president understands these challenges well. As Harvard's general counsel, he was at the epicenter of just about every difficult issue the institution faced. But he was always much more than a general counsel. In fact, I kept trying to invent additional titles that could encompass the scope and centrality of his work. But what matters, of course, is not the title, but the reality. He was not just playing defense, responding to the crises a general counsel must face. He played an indispensable role in envisioning the future a future in which college is affordable for all, a future in which the campus community is fully inclusive and all students can thrive, a future in which free speech can flourish and debate is not a means of scoring points or settling scores, but of bridging differences and seeking truth, a future in which human dignity is nourished and ennobled, not assaulted and belittled. At a time when education is not perhaps the last, but certainly is the best hope for our future, Gettysburg College has vital work to do in pursuit of these ideals. Few endeavors could be more worthy, and no human being could be more deeply dedicated than your new president to leading you forward. My congratulations to Gettysburg College for its inspired choice. And my very best wishes for what I know will be the brilliant success of the Juliano era. After all, it's beginning with Bob Day. <laughs> Together, I know that you will do great work and good work too. Thank you very much.